triple option since 1980, right? And that's crazy. But now it's a new day. Uh, and they are running this new option attack out of a spread gun. I'm looking forward to seeing how they execute that tonight. And we are set for football. For Army and for ULM, we are underway. And the kick goes through the end zone. And the offense for the Warhawks here at Malone Stadium will come on out under the direction of their quarterback, Jaya Wright, making his first career collegiate start. Well, listen, when you're new like this, you're looking for security blankets. And I expect Jair to look towards number four, Tyrone Howell. Six foot three, 204 pounds. He's one of the best wide receivers in America that you never heard of, folks. I expect him to get in the football a lot. But before all of that, I'm going to try to establish this run and see if I can get a play action going against this Army defense. Well, Jaya Wright, 6'1", 205 pounds, a sixth-year senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, started his career. Now he drops the opening snap and is going to go down. An inauspicious start to the season for ULM. Spencer Jones, the inside linebacker, in to bring him down immediately. Well, listen, when you got new guys uh, all over your team, you're going to have miscues, and that's, that's one of the things you worry about if you're head coach Terry Bowden. Are we ready to play from the opening snap? On second down, pass complete for a short gain. That'll bring up third down and long. Nice job defensively by Army to string that out. Jabari Moore, a senior cornerback on the hit. Well, first early test from Jaya Wright. You're third and long. The good news is Army really struggled stopping the pass last season. We're going to find out really quick if Army has gotten that squared away in 2023. And we want to let you know that we are having some power issues here in the stadium. So some of that may come across on the broadcast. We apologize in advance for that. But we are just underway on opening night. Here is third down and long for the Warhawks. Right? Keeps the play alive. Completes the pass. But swarmed under is Tyrone Howell. This is good zone coverage. And when you're in that situation third and long, you want to play the sticks. Let the ball be thrown in front of you, and you come up and rally and make the tackle. And that's how there. We saw how he can get the ball and get upfield, but there's the zone coverage. See how many defenders now? You're bracketing Ty Tyrone Howard. And here's you come up now, bam, make hits. Right? We need 11 guys to the ball. That's how they're going to stop this passing attack. But I'm just telling you right now, Howell's going to be a problem all day long. Braxton Gilbo on the punt. And back deep to receive the senior defensive back for Army from Carson, California, Cameron Jones. He's going to let it hit the turf and go out of bounds at around the 20-yard line. And we will get our very first look at this new Army offense. I'm anxious to see it. Because, again, you, your whole identity of your Army was this triple option. And now you're starting a brand new era. Bryson Daly, you're up, bro. You're going to lead us into a new Less triple option, more option, but from the gun look of Army football. And we know he's a dual-threat guy. I mean, he's the guy that can run this type of offense. He's a better thrower than they're used to having. But, look, he's not an air raid guy. And that's what Coach Munkins told us. He's not an air raid guy. He can still run the football. We can just throw it a little bit better than we've done in the past. Yeah, coming out of Abernathy, Texas, he's a junior. And in high school, he was both a linebacker and a quarterback. And a lot of schools were recruiting him to play defense. Here he is on first down. And they pick up positive yardage with Daly at 6 feet, 215 pounds, falling forward for four yards. Yeah, so listen, we talked about it's a new offense. But make no mistake, Army's going to run the football, right? They're always one of the leaders nationally with Navy in terms of over 300 yards a game running the, off, uh, running the football. They're not going to get away from it completely. What you're going to see, though, is a lot of pre-snap motions and shifts that you've never seen from the cadets. And he, like his opposite number, Jaya Wright, has very little experience. Bryson Daly making his first start. He's gotten into six games. 0 for 1 passing in his career. He has never completed a pass. And a gain of maybe a yard. And that'll bring up second down, or rather third down in about six. And also, we should tell you again, we don't have the score on the bug at the bottom of your screen because of power issues the time is being held by the officials on the field, so we don't have that either. At least at this point, we'll pass along what we know when we know. On third down and six, the running back is Jacoby Buchanan. 
Call him slim these days. He's down from 285 pounds to 255 <laughs> for his senior year. Back to pass. Plenty of time, and he dumps it off to find an open man. Liam Fortner, he turns the corner and goes to the 30. And Fortner dragged out of bounds at the 22-yard line. That's a heck of a first completed pass in the career of Bryson Daly. No question about it. And this is the evolution of this offense now. In pass, I guarantee you whoever was playing quarterback for the Black Knights would have ran that football. Daly kept his eyes downfield. You watch it. He's going to manipulate the pocket, but he's looking to throw, folks. He's not taking off. Wonderful job of going through your progressions on the move and throwing an accurate ball. 43 yards on the game. That's the new Army Black Knights offense. Aiden Reed, the running back, coming on the sweep. They give it to Ijon Marshall. Able to sneak his way to the 15-yard line. Good pickup on first down for the cadets. Yeah, Marshall out of Baltimore, Maryland, is a very good football player. And you'll see them get him the ball on the move. You'll see him in the slot running routes. Uh, they'll find the ways to get number three the ball just because he's so dynamic. Inside the red zone. Army a year ago felt like it finished the season strong, trying to build on it. This is a proud program that in recent years has had one of the best records in the country at the Division I level. Up the middle, nothing doing. A couple of Warhawks just waiting to stand him up. Jeterius Evans, the bandit, was one of the first two to get there. And so this is where it's very interesting for Army. In the past, we know this was four down territory. We're going to run a dive, and we may run the option on the next play. Now, what will we get from this offense? Are they comfortable now just back, throwing back, dropping back, excuse me, and throwing the football on third and short? Aiden Reed, Miles Stewart, the two running backs flanking quarterback Bryson Daly. And by the way, this is a true freshman center making the start. Out of the shotgun, quarterback going to keep Daly. Popped at the 12-yard line, falling forward. It could be a first down. And indeed it is. They'll move the chain. So this is, again, a part of the evolution of the offense. It's an option look, but they're running it from the gun. And what you're not going to see is a bunch of low blocks. Right? They, they forced Army to get out of their traditional offense with the rule changes. You can no longer block low below the waist on the perimeter of the defense and in the second level. So you can see a bunch of guys staying on their feet and blocking downfield. But still, it was an option. Great job of reading it out by the quarterback. Keep an eye on number 11, top of your screen, as there's movement up front. It's going to go against the defense. And there is the 10th year head coach, Jeff Munkin, a former wide receiver in his playing days back in the 80s at Division III, Millican University in Decatur, Illinois. He knows all about being a receiver. Now he's going to further introduce his receiving core into this offense this year. And again, keep your eye on number 11, Isaiah Alston. He's the top returning receiver for Army. Ball comes loose. Mm. Still loose. ULM forces the turnover. Well, look, this is what ULM struggled at last year. And they gave up over 30 points a game because their red zone defense was porous. Great job. If that quarterback's going to pull that ball down, I need to hit somebody hitting him. Great job of getting to the quarterback and knocking that football out of his hands. And now you're jumping on it. Great job by Massey of finishing that rush off. But that's great red zone defense by ULM. They struggled last year, red zone offense and red zone defense. That's why their record wasn't where it wanted to be. But so far, so good with red zone defense in the first drive. So Army took five minutes and eight seconds off the clock, turn it over, and the Warhawks with the football for the second time. Right hands it off. Hunter Smith picks his way across the line of scrimmage out to the 22-yard line for a pickup of six. We talked about Army struggling stopping the pass defensively last season. Anything that they can get efficiency-wise out of this run game, 
talking about the Warhawks. Man, it's going to bode well for this play action pass. You saw that tackle was made by Leo Lowen. He had 100 tackles to lead Army a year ago, leading the way again this year. On second down, it's another positive pickup of five. And they will move the chains again. And you saw the play action there. Uh, he, he put that ball in and took it out. He had a run pass option on the outside, made the right decision and kept the ball. This guy is a dual threat as well. Those coaches are high on him. Jaya Wright. They also wonder, until you are in the fire, will he have poise under pressure? Right. That will show itself in various forms. And you always wonder that about guys who don't have a lot of experience. They look good in practice, but when the lights come on, I mean, you know, things can change. And so they're so curious to see how he handles this. Second down, tucks it, and gets leveled at the line of scrimmage. It's great team defense, great pursuit. And again, number 31 in white, Leo Lowen, senior captain from Austin, Texas, going to be in the middle of a lot of it, coming off a huge season. He had three sacks, a couple of interceptions to go along with those 100 tackles a year ago. That's 16 against Navy, their arch rival. You think that was a big deal? Oh, yes. You get 16, <laughs> you're a legend. And especially against Navy. Mm. Down the middle, nice diving attempt by Darian Wiley, but he just couldn't come up with it. Well, I, I liked it. Everything worked out. It's one of those deals, you, you know, where the operation was a success, but the patient died. I mean, that ball is low in the way where it's supposed to be, but just right through the arms of young Darian Wiley. you got to find a way to come up with that. Sometimes all the catches aren't going to be beautiful right in your hands the bread basket you gotta go down and make tough catches for your inexperienced quarterback Jaya Wright told us earlier this week that uh, Wiley is one of his security blankets put it where it needed to be but it brings up fourth down on the incompletion and that punt off the side of the foot not a great one and it'll be Army football when we come back Power issues here in Monroe, Louisiana, but we're playing some football on opening night. H-Town, we're coming. We're coming. Little uh, Southwest Conference action. 30-plus years later, glad to have that game on our schedule. And we've got under seven minutes remaining here in the first quarter from Monroe, Louisiana. Electrical issues keeping the clock off of our screen in what is a scoreless ball game and uh, this is Army's second possession. We've seen them take a shot downfield that worked with a chunk play. It's still early, but what are you seeing, Ty? Well, just taking that shot, the willingness to do that, that's not what Army has been for roughly 40 some odd years. Right? So I like the ability to do a little bit of both, but again, it's still gonna come down to this offensive line dominating up front and can we run the football in a variety of ways in terms of the quarterback keeping and end the pitch. Quarterback is Bryson Daly, going to keep it on a design run. A Zion Brown, the junior from Ennis, Texas, the first in on the stop. They'll place the ball just at about the 40-yard line, bringing up third down and three. They said Daly coming into camp was pressing a little bit. As camp went on, he got more accustomed to it, the starting role, and has played more relaxed leading up to opening night. And he'll get better and better. Uh, whatever we see from him today, and so far it's been really good, it's going to be a different quarterback each month as we go through this schedule just because of the experience factor. He's a coach's kid. Daryl Daly, his dad, he played for. Right up the middle, they give it to Jacoby Buchanan, and that's what you do with the six foot, 255 pound senior from St. Charles, Missouri. When you need some tough yardage, you give it to him. Well, listen, they say he's, he's 255. I, I, I'm looking at Jacoby and I'm like, no, no, that, that's 260. I mean, that, don't, don't lie to me now. <laughs> I got eyes, I got two eyes, but guess what? He's actually nimble. And he's not a guy that's gonna run the darkness and fall down. He's got some quick feet and you'll see him blocking really well also in the pass game. He's, he's tied for 10th all-time in Army football history in touchdowns scored. Touchdown machine, that guy. You get in the, in the goal line, you can forget about it. 24 and counting. Tied for 10th on the all-time list. Running the option right. Daily track down from behind. But he rolls forward for a gain of about four. So at the end of the day, again, this is a different formation you're sitting out of, right? At the end of the day, it's the same deal. Can the trigger man read it out? 
and he's got an option to give to the fullback. And sometimes it's a token option where the fullback is now leading him around the corner, and his only other true option is the pitch. But at the end of the day, like I said, you know, it's on Bryson Daly to read the defense and make the right decision. And when you're getting four pop, that's the right decision. The running backs are Stewart, 22, Reed, number eight. He is said to be the fastest out of that running back room. Daly fires a quick strike over the middle. It's complete for a first down and more to Isaiah Alston, the top returning receiver from a year ago. The junior from Carteret, New Jersey, has a first down for the cadets. Yeah, this is Army. Okay, This is a read option, right? And that actually it might have been a play, a play action because I didn't see any offensive linemen go downfield. But that is a hard play action where you're influencing the linebackers. That's why there's a lane, a beautiful lane to throw it to Austin. 6'4", 195 pounds, big-time catch radius. Yeah, and he's been a big play guy even in the old system. In his career, he averages over 19 yards per reception. Yeah, that's big time. And that number would be number one if that's the way it stands at the end of his college career. Pitch it left. Fumble. Balls out. Ooh. Army recovers after the ball came loose from Tyson Riley. Man. Big break for Army. Now this is going to be a jarring collision. Watch this at the point of attack. Boom. You better keep that thing high and tight because defenders are hunting. I think that was Carl Glass Jr. that knocked that thing out. But, man. You talk about an inside-out defender coming with a bad attitude. Yeah. That's that's the type of linebacker play you want to see. He's one of the locals on this roster out of Wachita Parish in Monroe. He forces the fumble. Army, though, gets it back, bringing up second down, seven yards to go. Daly, time to pass. Now he's going to run across the 30, inside the 25. It's another Army first down. That's the type of production that you just never saw in the past game from this team. I mean, that's a quarterback who went through his progressions. As he's going through his progressions, linebackers are getting depth. There's open grass. He'd rather run. He's a very dynamic runner. But as you saw earlier in the quarter, he can throw the football too. And when you can do both, man, it stresses the defense so much. Second time Army's been to the red zone here in the first quarter. They fumbled the first time. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Handed off Hayden Reed. Runs into a couple of defenders, but falls for a pickup of two yards. So ULM, the defense, you know, as a team, they were minus seven in takeaways. And that's a problem, right? You want to be plus seven or more if you're really balling. You had, you had a couple balls, one on the ground. You got the one turnover. Can you get another one? Can you get more? Defensively, you got to challenge yourself to get more turnovers for this offense to get them going. Let's see how they hold up within this red zone. Here's a triple option look for you with Ijon Marshall, the wide receiver, going into the backfield alongside Hayden Reed and Miles Stewart. Give it to Stewart. And as you said off the top, this new offense for Jeff Munkin, he says we're going to look different, but we're not different in terms of toughness and overall approach. Yeah, and one of the big differences is the size of that offensive line. Last year, when I did their game against Troy, there wasn't one offensive lineman who weighed 300 pounds. Now, that's all of them. <laughs> the entire line, except for one guy, is 300 pounds or more. Uh, and, and so they're going to push and lean on guys, and they're going to try to wear you out with a new physical look up front. Connor Fanukin, Jackson Filipowicz, the veteran guards, flanking the true freshman Brady Small at center. And we've got a flag that comes down at the snap. Well, what's different about the blocking scheme for this Army team now, Ty? Well, they had smaller offensive linemen. They were fast, and that's all they did was cut. Now, I'm not going to get down on the ground. It took me an hour to get back up, right? So, but I'm so you were playing offensive line there. Which I hate. Don't bring it up. But now, <laughs> you're not staying. You're getting on the ground. You're staying up, and you're sustaining the block down the field now. We had to get the trainer for Jeff, our super producer. He was in trouble after that uh, contact. You see that contact? That was a little high, Coach, but I'm just saying. But, no, right now, they're staying up off the ground with bigger guys to get movement. Daly fires. Mm. Incomplete. The defensive back able to get back and get a hand on that. 
and knock it away. A.J. Watts, the free safety from Columbus, Georgia, making a big play for ULM. Yeah, it's a big-time play by Watts because he had to get depth. And your job is to, is to be that underneath player in the zone and get in the throwing lane, force a perfect throw. They're trying to get the ball to their big-time receiver in Austin, and you need help from underneath defenders. Nice job. So a 37-yard field goal attempt from Quinn Moretzky. And the young man from Oahu, Hawaii, misses the field goal left. And so the score remains 0-0. Army's been to the red zone twice so far tonight and still nothing to show for it. Second quarter here in Monroe, Louisiana with Tyoka Jackson. I'm Doug Sherman. There you see the quarterback for Louisiana Monroe, Jaya Wright, heading back out onto the field. And again, we're having trouble in the stadium with power. So the scoreboards and the clocks are out. The timing is being held on the field on what is a warm and humid night. Mm -hmm. We got close to triple digits earlier this afternoon. Uh, the highest I saw was 98. But uh, what do you do? Now you're a quarter into this game in terms of keeping these guys fresh and keep from cramping up. Ty. Well, we're gonna, they're going to test the depth of both of these teams, and we'll talk about it after the snap. On the snap, the handoff gets out across the 25-yard line. Pick up a five on first down. Isaiah Woolard, who is said to be the grandpa in the running back room. How about that? A six-year senior from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Yeah. Try again, and this time, grandpa gets pushed back. No gain. Bring up third down and five. Maybe even lost a yard. So we're talking about that depth, getting Isaiah getting Willard his, his carries. But, you know, this heat will test your depth because you want to roll guys in and out. And a team that cannot do that and play good football, they're going to suffer in the fourth quarter no matter what. Third down, seven yards to go. Jaya Wright and his running back Isaiah Willard looking over to the near sideline with time to play with before third down. Right. Fires, far sideline, caught for a first down. Cameron Jones on the coverage. And it's a first down for ULM on the receiving end. Tyrone hit Howell. Well, you got off coverage. You can forget about it because Howell's going to destroy you with stop routes and hooks, and the timing is just too good. I mean, this guy, but pick your poison. If you, if you play him too tight, he'll run by you. If you play off, he'll catch it underneath you. And we haven't mentioned Bugs Mortimer yet. Nana Davis with his first reception, the sophomore from Atala, Alabama. Totally different receiver. They like him in the slot. And beautiful play action. And that quarterback is looking. Nice job of throwing it down and underneath where only his guy can catch it. Quick strike. Again, it's Davis out to midfield on first down. I wonder, too, we're talking about heat. Does a, a team that is from the deep south here in Monroe have an advantage against the team from upstate New York. Uh, you got to. I mean, now look, it's, it's warm in New York, too, but it's not like this. The humidity here, it's swampy out here. You're used to it. You feel it every day. Second and five. Long pass. Good coverage to come up and make the stick and not allow any yards after the catch for Tyrone Howell. Nice job of driving on that by Cameron Jones. There's the stop route again. Now look at Jones drive on it. Beautiful. And don't hesitate. And I like how he went for that football, too, to try to get the ball out. Third down and three. Here comes the blitz. They throw that way, complete the pass, get a first down. What a nice job by Jaya Wright to see where he wanted to go with that football. And you called it. I'm not sure that that's what was called in the huddle or at the line of scrimmage, but he saw off coverage, and he saw his best player out there by himself. Just, just flip it out there and let him go to work. First down. Tyrone Howell, a Kansas State transfer a couple of years ago with the Wildcats, had seven catches for 98 yards after beginning his college career in junior college. Throwing deep down the near sideline in single coverage. Incomplete, trying to find Nana Davis. Love the safety play. That was Hammonds coming over. And, man, that's a beautiful safety play because he cut off the receiver. That's the way to get in the way of the receiver without getting a P.I. Smart. Intelligent defense there by a safety who's been around. Senior, six foot, 195 pounds. Second down pass through Ooh. the hands and dropped by Bugs Mortimer. I have a feeling Bugs heard the footsteps. <laughs> you think? Young player they like, though. Great job of coming up and making a stick. Make him feel you now. 
That's Casey Larkin. But I believe, yes, Mr. Mortimer was thinking about the safety before he even got there. Third and ten, a design run for right. Army was ready for it. Making a strong ankle tackle to keep that from breaking more than a five-yard pickup. Decision time. What are we going to do, Mr. Bowden? Coach Bowden, we going to think about it? Looks like they're pulling their offense off. There was some thought to go for it. Not a bad spot. You're on the plus side of the 40, 39-yard line to be exact. He thought about it, but here comes the uh, punting team. And you mentioned there he is, Coach Bowden, Terry Bowden, in his third year as head coach at ULM. He has had six head coaching jobs in his career. Five of them have been rebuilds, including the one he's immersed in here in Monroe. Rebuild specialist, coach in the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and now the 2020s. Been around. Hunt headed toward the end zone where it lands. And that will take us to break. We are in the second quarter in this season opener. Still no score between the Cadets and the Warhawks. 11.02 remaining second quarter at a steamy Malone Stadium here in Monroe, Louisiana. Temperatures in the upper 90s. And during that break, Jeff Munkin received word from the officials that again we are continuing to have electrical issues in the stadium. And it sounds like the auxiliary power we are on here at the press level will run out at some point in the not too distant future. And so we will have to adjust as well as the Army coaching staff. You know, of course, every time on a football game, you've got several assistants who are up as the eye in the sky. So Coach Munkin was getting that news and he's going to have to adjust and call an audible, most likely unless they can get this figured out. Well, he's angry about it, but the good news is both teams have to go. Yep. Right? So no one's going to have an advantage. And obviously they prepare so many different things for the guys in the booth to see stuff and looks like that's going away for both teams so this is going to be old school old school who can win it on the field with their coaches and adjustments talking man to man and nobody has an eye in the sky well army has moved the football effectively so far tonight but a fumble and a missed field goal has kept them scoreless bryson daly dropped for no gain and that'll bring up third down and ten i'm loving the early run defense by ULM. They understand that they can knock this run out and make this Army team one-dimensional. And I don't care if it's a new offense or not. You make any team one-dimensional, maybe except for the Kansas City Chiefs, you got a shot to win the game. And so certainly they've been able to really be efficient against this run game and force what used to be a death nail for this offense third and long. We'll see how they handle it with this new offense. And let's see if the defensive front, Kennard Snyder, Jalen Ware, Aiden Huntington can get to the quarterback here on third and ten. Quick release, nicely done by Army to avoid the rush coming. Get rid of the football to Isaiah Alston, and that's a huge pickup for first down. Well, that was slick by <laughs> Daly. You see him stick that ball in and pull it out? Beautiful ball handling and a nice slant route there by Alston. And once he gets his hands on the ball, he's a tough tackle. He's not looking to go down. When you're 6'4", 200 pounds, you're going to punish some people. Out of Modern Day Prep High School in New Jersey, a 20-yard reception. Bryson Daly now operating on first down. A lot of modern days out there. I had a modern day L.A. I had a modern day game last week on ESPN2. Mm -hmm. Modern day Catholic out in Carlsbad. Running option left. Daly's going to keep it and get hogtied out of bounds. Read very nicely by ULM. Jeterius Evans in pursuit. Senior from Center, Texas. Now, he plays the bandit spot. I always get a kick out of the different names that some of these coaches use, but what is the bandit position? Well, he's a hybrid guy. He's a guy that plays outside linebacker but can also displace if the formation calls him to walk out on a slot guy. So he's a guy that can run. He's not going to be very big. He's 215 pounds. He can run but also hit. He's a modern-day sort of safety in the box all the time. Well, he was abandoned on that play, bringing up <laughs> second down and long. Daly yeah. over the middle, and it's intercepted. Ooh. Picked off at the 45-yard line. A second turnover for the Army offense. And coming up with a big play, it's Jeterius Evans on the interception. Back-to-back, -back, Evans. I like it. He never saw Evans. He's looking for the tight end over the middle. And watch Evans sneak off into the passing lane. Beautiful. He wanted to rush. 
he couldn't get the pass rush, so he starts sloughing off and watch him get the passing lane and get them hands on the football. And I like greedy guys. Don't bat it down. Don't knock it down. They'll go grab that football, young man. We talked about this ULA, ULM team being minus seven in turnover ratio. That's two turnovers now in the first half and one near turnover on the fumble they couldn't get. But this is the type of production you need from a defense, and this is the type of production from a defense that has a lot of new guys. We talked about the length and athleticism they've added, and it's showing up. And if Jeterius' older brother, Octavius Evans, is watching, I'm sure he's nodding his head. He was a all-Mountain West Conference receiver at Boise State. Mm. So now younger brother can say, hey, wait a second, I'm not just playing defense because I can't catch the football. I can catch the ball. And unlike you, big brother, I'm doing it on NFL Network. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. There Enjoy he it. Yeah, and you see the turnover belt? Very nice. Well, this defense has bent but not broken for ULM. Now it's offense with a mm. pass behind the intended receiver trying to adjust to make the play but unable to do it was Bud Tolbert. Well, I uh, just... The, the calmness from Wright. He's starting to mature. He's getting better right before our eyes. He's comfortable. The moment's not too big for him. He's climbing the pocket. Man, that ball was just a little bit high, high and behind. But I like the decision making and the poise from this quarterback. He started his career at Northern Illinois. Didn't play for the Huskies. Redshirted back in 2018. Making his first career start. And plenty of room to run for the Warhawks quarterback. He walks out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. He picks up 25 on the scamper. And this is what a guy like this brings to your offense. He's not going to be an iron deer in the front lawn. He's going to move. Watch him feel the soft corner to his right, and look at him run. And look at the stalk block by Bud Tolbert. Yep. Turn and help your quarterback. Nice job there by Zero. Isaiah Woolard, the running back, along with the quarterback, Jaya Wright. First and 10 from the 18, right. Fires a strike near side, complete to Howell inside the 10 yard line. So the way Army's playing, they're saying, we're not gonna get beat over the top by Tyrone Howell. And so what you see is an adjustment by the entire offense, including Matt Kubik, the offensive coordinator. And see, so you're gonna run him on short routes. Let him get the ball and get his yardage after he catches the football. We talked about him being a tough tackle. Army's gonna have to come up and rally on number four all day. It's first and goal, ULM, the deepest the offense has been tonight. How about that coverage? Tied up on the receiver by Jabari Moore. And was that number four versus number four? I think it was. But he tried to go back with the stop route again. And so Army is trying to figure this out. I'm going to play off, but I'm going to drive on anything short. Great job there, getting your hands on the football. Jabari Moore without... Getting the P.I., that's what you'd love to see. He used his play side arm, Doug. He didn't come with the right arm. He came with the play side arm, the left arm, and got the ball out. you got to be careful against this bookend senior corner combination. Cameron Jones, Jabari Moore, both have six career INTs. Quarterback keep. Army sniffs it out. Tackle made at the six-yard line after a pickup of three. We've seen a lot of design quarterback runs. As this season goes on, it's going to be interesting to see, does Jaya Wright hold up? Right, because it's different than running the option where guys got different responsibilities. If you just get a snap and you run a quarterback sweep, all 11 guys see you. Obviously, they'll learn to develop a pass off of that as well. Wouldn't be shocked if I see that later in the game. Nolan Quinlan, the tight end, see if they run his way right. He goes out into the flat. Instead, they pass the other way and out of bounds, incomplete. The intended receiver, Tyrone Howell, but the former Kansas State Wildcat was too far out of bounds. And you saw the circus catch. I mean, this is this guy's a 50-50 ball nightmare, but if you're right, the quarterback, you got to give him a chance. Keep that ball in bounds. And that's a very, it's a low efficient play. A lot of people run, you know, that alley you play 50-50 ball. Uh, you know, but you got to be really smart as a quarterback to throw it in the area where your guy can get it, but not give up the INT. Just a little bit off the screws by Jaya Wright. So a 24-yard field goal attempt upcoming from Derek McCormick, a junior from Port Charlotte, Florida, puts it up and through. And on their first sustained drive of the night, the Warhawks get on the scoreboard first here in the second quarter. ULM three, Army nothing. Terry Bowden was a walk-on running back at West Virginia back in the 70s. Played for his daddy, Bobby Bowden. Played for Frank Signetti Sr. 
He says of himself now at age 67, I'm not a CEO, I'm just an old ball coach. Mm. And you can see the ball coach is putting in some work through that shirt. He's leaking right now, just like me. He looked like me or something. <laughs> I'm hot up here, but guess what? We on fire. I'm loving this stuff right now. And that, you, you Guys, you're looking at a walking college football encyclopedia. This dude's been doing it that long. He knows everybody. Love talking to him. 40 years ago, he got his first head coaching job at Division II Salem College. Now Salem University in West Virginia. His quarterback the first two years at Salem, Jimbo Fisher. Ooh. 30 years ago, he was National Coach of the Year at Auburn. We'll take another break. Back to Monroe in a moment. The maintenance crew here at Malone Stadium in Monroe, Louisiana, has been working overtime since the start of kickoff. You can see we've now got... Some of the power elements coming back. You can see six minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the second quarter, along with Tyoka Jackson. I'm Doug Sherman. 3-0, the Warhawks with a field goal on their last possession. Now Army football, first down. Mm. Picked up and ridden back. Bryson Daly, but not until he picked up four yards. Aiden Huntington, they say, is probably as strong and as quick and as twitchy as anybody on the roster. And look at his lower body. Look how thick those legs are. And I like to hustle. Look at that. Beautiful job of hustling. And we've got a flag. I think it's going to be an unnecessary roughness flag. But that Army offensive line, the left side of that offensive line, drove a defender. I missed the number. 15 yards downfield. And they stayed up. That's the, again, that's the adjustment. Unfortunately, we're still unable to hear the official. I think they picked it up, partner. It sounded like or seemed like it to me. Yeah. And then resetting the clock. But to Aiden Huntington, great speed, quickness, vertical leap, who played his first three years of college football at Kent State. Were you able to pick any of that up, Ty? Yes, a little bit. But it was just the commas in between words. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's going on, man. They're making it hard on me. All right. Second down and four is what we can tell you as Bryson Daly, the junior quarterback from Abernathy, Texas, making his first career start. He takes the snap and no fooling this defense. No gain. Nicely done by ULM. Well, Azian Brown got quick penetration and destroyed that play. That was a strong side sweep again. And he made Daly cut back right away back into the defender. So give number 28 Brown a lot of credit of shutting that, uh, that play down. Sometimes you can make the play without actually making the tackle, Doug. And so that time, that's exactly what Mr. Brown did. On third and four, big number 33, Jacoby Buchanan comes into the offensive backfield for Army. They, though, hand it the other way. He's... A lead blocker, and it doesn't do any good. Maybe a pickup of one. That'll bring up fourth down. So the old offense of Army, this is automatic going for it. I don't care where it was on the field. Three yards, that no, four yards, that, that wasn't going to get them to the kick. Different offense now, different situation. I like this because you're playing field goal, or excuse me, field position game. You get a good punt now, you're going to make ULM go the long way. And so the punter from sophomore, or from Franklin, Tennessee, the sophomore Cooper Allen. On to punt, standing at his own 17-yard line. Fair catch called for at the 27-yard line, and that's where ULM will take over after Bugs Mortimer secured that punt. We'll take a break late in the first half, up by a field goal, ULM. You're watching college football on the NFL Network with former St. Louis Ram and Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Tyoka Jackson. I'm Doug Sherman. Glad you're with us. We are in Monroe, Louisiana for this opening night football game with the Army Black Knights in town. And for Louisiana Monroe, head coach Terry Bowden did a complete overhaul. Last year, this team went 4-8 and eight overall, 3-5 and five in the Sun Belt, but they have 40 new scholarship players this year. That's not 67 like Coach Prime has at Colorado, but 40 new scholarship players. It really is a reboot for the Warhawks. And it's interesting that they ran the ball two times for that first down because they lost 87% of their rushing yards from last year. Their top three runners are gone. And so a lot of that transfer portal has ended up in that backfield, and so it was going to be really curious to see if they can get some efficient running going today. Jaya Wright 
Quarterback goes down for a big loss. Jimmy Charlo. One of the captains, a senior from Ringwood, New Jersey, plays the outside linebacker nickel position. Able to bring down the QB. He had a big game against Navy last year. Nine tackles from that outside linebacker spot. But as a bull rush, he came off of it. A lot of times you see guys get stuck on the bull rush. I like how he bull rushed and got off and made the play. Nice job, Charlo. Now this is Hunter Smith, the starting running back, sophomore from Little Rock, Arkansas, who was primarily on special teams a year ago. Had only two carries for nine yards coming into the season. So again, a lot of new players in new places. Smith is a familiar face, but doing something completely different this year. Right? Has his pass oh. intercepted. Army with the takeaway and blockers out in front. It's a pick six for the cadets and a leap into the end zone for Bo Nicholas Paul. Man, what a drive by Bo Nicholas Paul. Wait till we see this replay. Zone coverage. He sticks his foot in the ground and drives on that ball. Off coverage. So again, once you see the stop route, go get it. And see, he made the decision midway. Should I go for the player and the tackle or should I go for the ball? I love the fact that he went for the ball. When the ball's in the air, DBs have to believe it's mine. Split splash, dive into the end zone. Bo Nicholas Paul. Second career interception. He had one a couple of years ago, and now for the senior from Irvington, New Jersey, he can say he's got a pick six. Yeah, again on NFL Network. Not a lot of guys can say that now. So he gives Army the lead, and the point after upcoming with 238 remaining in the half. Out of the hold of Billy Belke. Quinn Moretzky out of Punahou High School in Hawaii makes it 7-3 Army. New offense, but the defense still pretty good. If you can score points on defense, your chances of winning go sky high. Just the way Bo Nicholas Paul got into that end zone. Ada Byers leads Virginia Union into an HBCU matchup against Morehouse College. It's the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic tomorrow, 4 Eastern, live on NFL Network. When you say Virginia Union, I think of the great Charles Oakley, right, from Chicago and New York. Bo's my brother in the nose, they said. So. <laughs> Like Roderick Fodd, the assistant head coach, running backs. He was the head coach at Grambling State mm -hmm. until just a couple of years ago. And from what we are told, one of the running backs, Isaiah Woolard, gets grief from his teammates saying he looks like Coach Fobbs, <laughs> that he's the grandpa in the running backs room. Flag comes at the end of that play after a 20-yard return. We will see if it stands. But well, when you're a sixth-year senior around a bunch of 18-year-olds, you're going to be called grandpa. That's just the way it goes. That's right. You got a little hair on your face. And <laughs> little experience, life experiences. It hit you hard. Yeah, I get it. As you see, holding was the call on the return against the return team. with two and a half minutes remaining here at Malone Stadium in Monroe, Louisiana. Well, this is an Army football program that has won three national championships back in 1944, 45, and 46 under the great Earl Red Blake. And they've got three Heisman Trophy winners, Doc Blanchard and Glenn Davis back in 45 and 46, and then Pete Dawkins in 1958. And it looks like the officials are taking a video review to see if there was targeting on that kickoff return. What he's looking for is forcible contact with the crown of the helmet. And that, folks, is the crown of the helmet. And I saw a head dip down. That's an indicator. Um, but that's scary to me. This is the type of hits that you want to clean up. Adam Cash, a backup linebacker, number 29 in white. No. 
I want to see another angle again because I saw Cash dip his head. And, and that, again, is scary because you want to see what you hit because when you dip your head down and hit with the top of your helmet for all the young players watching, you are at high alert for necking. And we don't need it. We don't want it. Your eyes are up. See what you hit. Bow your neck, however you want to think about it. But you cannot put your head down and make forcible contact because you're putting your livelihood in danger. So see him come. Should be from the left middle of your screen or right middle. Bam, right there. See his head down and pop back up? That's the indicator right there. If his head was up from the beginning, he would have never popped up. It was down. It popped up. He made contact. Watch 29. Bam. No, 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 no. That just, boy, that hurts me watching. And again, I'm not... I'm not so getting on him about him, you know, being injected, they call it. I'm just worried about him as a, as a player and as a person. Because that puts you in danger when you put your head down like that. Got to see what you hit. One of the many Texans on this Army roster. He's from Arlington. Play fourth down with a kick. So I think we got the gist of it, saying exactly what you were saying, Tayoka. Yeah, and he and he looks incredulous when you look at him. So he's going to learn. You just wait till you see the finish. Not fourth down. We're going to replay the kickoff. Wait till you see the film. You will agree with it. That was not legal. You've got to be smarter and better than that. And I'm thinking about you. Adam Cash and, and your family and your your well-being. Forget the football stuff. You, you're going to be gone, gone for the rest of this game, but I don't want you to be gone for the rest of your life. Keep your head up. Be brutal. Be physical. But put your head up so you can be healthy. Well said. Got a big hug from Isaiah Alston. Being talked up by his coaches and teammates as he has been ejected for targeting. And one of the newer rules that they changed a year ago is the guy doesn't have to leave the field anymore. He can stay on the field and, and be a leader and be engaged with his teammates. He just could no longer play. So they'll take his helmet so he doesn't sneak back out there or do anything silly. But And he's disappointed. I get it. But when he watches the film, he'll learn from that not to do it again. And so they will re-kick it from the 20-yard line, and that should give ULM better field position as you see the return men are now standing at the 15-yard line to receive the kick from Cole Talley. The kick taken at the five-yard line. Very well covered by the Black Knights. So here's the targeting rule so you can see the language. The thing to look for, though, is underneath the 15-yard penalty, forcible contact to the head and neck area. Didn't get that. But forcible hit by the crown of the helmet. That's what we saw in this instance. So either one of those two will get you gone. And again, they're, they're not doing it just to penalize the defense. That's not, that has nothing to do with that. In fact, targeting Pauls are down for the last three years. It's to protect the players. Quick pass complete. Blown up along the sideline by Cameron Jones. Man, that's a man's play by Cameron Jones. Why? Not just to hit. He had to play off the block. Physical against the receiver. Discard to shed the blocker. He didn't go make the play. Cameron Jones could have made that play with his other teammates on the side drinking a drink. That's big-time play right there. I'm telling you, these bookend senior quarterbacks, Cameron Jones, Jabari Moore, there's not a better position oh. group than the DBs for Army. Another interception. It's Max Domenico who steps out of bounds inside the 20, and that defense steps up again, leaving the Black Knights in the red zone. Domenico, you go. The hands, I love the hands, though. How many times do we see defensive backs get their hands on the ball and the ball goes on the ground? No, no, he's got suction cups. Nice, strong hands catching away from his body outside the frame, and he gets all he can get. Perfect, because you go to the near sideline just in case you accidentally fumble, the ball goes out of bounds. This is textbook. Catch the ball with your hands, and get to the near sideline, and get as much as you can get. Nice job, D. Domenico. Big-time play. Let's see if Army 
can capitalize off this field position. Another one of the Texans on this Army roster making a big play. And the offense takes over at the 20-yard line. Straight ahead with blockers Bryson Daly. Gain of five, five and a half yards. The cadets knocking on the door again. And they've got a little turnover deal. What was that, a hatchet? Looked like a hatchet. <laughs> I like it. Anything to get the players excited. Well, it's been working. Let Daly keep running the football. He's inside the five. Well, they're running quarterback power. And what you're seeing is this bigger, more physical offensive line move people. Watch the blocking. He's untouched. He's into the secondary before he gets touched. Following Buchanan's block, this time ULM able to make the stop at about the four-yard line. So the change in this offense has changed the way Army recruits. Remember, we talked about when we showed you a little film of me kicking the butt of our producer. <laughs> they wanted quicker, faster guys in that cut-blocking scheme. Now that you have to stay up, they want guys that can get on people and stick on them and drive them downfield. So that offensive line is humming right now. They're in a rhythm. And they control in the front. We might need to roll some of that video back again to show Jeff Graham getting the better of you, Tayoka. <laughs> Once again, ULM's bigs up front presenting a wall that's impossible for Daly to run through. This is the red zone defense that's been do being really good for them all night. And they've been doing really well once they get the ball inside the 20. Red zone defense is really an underrated part of playing defensive football. You, if you can bow your neck inside that 20 yard line space you're going to win a lot of football games because you're keeping the offense out of the end zone let's see if they can do it on third down daily throws to the end zone incomplete good coverage by carlin vigors making sure isaiah alston couldn't get to the spot i can't even believe my eyes this is the army black knights running fades in the corner of the end zone right you just never are you kidding me but look at it the coverage though He's playing bump coverage, gets his hand on the receiver, doesn't panic, doesn't do too much. Both guys get engaged, that's why it's no flag. When both guys touch each other, as long as no one drags or pulls, you're gonna avoid the flag. That's textbook one-on-one -on -one bump and rug coverage by Biggers. And so Quinn Moretzky, who missed a field goal attempt in the first quarter, will try again. He's eight for 10 last year, this one much shorter than the first, and it is good. Army's offense able to put three more points on the board after the interception late here in the first half. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock. To Coming seconds. up at the half, NFL Fantasy Live is back this year with info to help you fill out your team. Plus, a look ahead to tomorrow's Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic. D. Domenico with the big defensive play. And, you know, Army has had several opportunities that they didn't cash in on in the first quarter. But here in the second, they have allowed their defense to help put those points on the board. Yeah, complimentary football. That's another part of this game is sort of a, a hidden piece. When you make big play on one side, can the other side of the team make a big play to capitalize on it? So he gets his hands on the ball, sets up his offense, but it means nothing if they can't convert. Army got the run game. They had four rushes in that one series right there, dominating the line of scrimmage. They're getting it established, but they're doing it in a different way from this gun look. I like what I'm seeing from the Army offense. Well, head coach Jeff Munkin is the second winningest coach in program history for Army, 64 and 49, and it has really ratcheted up in terms of winning percentage since 2017. Ground ball kicked up the middle, fielded cleanly at the 15-yard line. ULM just trying to hold on to the football out across the 30-yard line on what is the final play of the first half. A competitive first half of football in this non-conference opener between Army and ULM. This is the end of the second quarter. Army leading the Warhawks 10-3. We'll come back with our halftime show right after this in Monroe, Louisiana. And they can thank the defense. 
Coach Bowden's ULM Warhawks have turned the ball over twice, and both times Army Tyoka Jackson made them pay. Yeah, both teams have two turnovers, have created two turnovers, but the difference is complimentary football. Can your defense set you up and the offense cash in? Points off turnovers for ULM, three. Points off turnovers for Army, ten. That's what the scoreboard looks like. And when we look at the halftime stats, really not much jumps at you. A couple of chunk plays either way, but no individual, no team numbers really jump and say, this is why the score is 10 to 3. It's been turning those turnovers by Army into points, and especially that pick six. In a, in a clean game. I mean, not a lot of flags on the field. Obviously, we saw the one targeting. We talked about that at length. But other than that, it's been a pretty clean game. Well contested, both teams playing hard. But now going into the second half of this game, we talked about football being a game of attrition. Who's going to have the depth to hang in on a very humid and hot night? And so back onto the field for Army, the quarterback Bryson Daly, a junior from Abernathy, Texas, making his first career start at QB. He's got his folks behind him. He has spent the last three years in West Point, started at their prep school, and then the last two years with the varsity, and he hands it off for a two-yard pickup on first down. And if you're just joining us, do not adjust your set. That's Yes, that's Army in a gun. <laughs> and they did run a dive, right? We talked about Army more the same. It's a little bit different in the formations and packages, but they're running the same offense for the most part with dives and a lot of quarterback There's keepers the and options. Please reset the game clock to 14 minutes, 50 seconds. And I still haven't been able to see the number. I thought it might have been 15, which would be Simeon Hines, one of the defensive backs, slow to get up Thank you. for ULM. But I do not have confirmation on that. Talk about going into the third and fourth quarter, the depth of both teams getting tested. If you can finish your thought, Ty, why, uh, while we're trying to figure this out. Oh, yeah. Again, the game of attrition. The depth of both teams will be tested because of the humidity and the heat. As the play started to, to rack up, who can roll in new fresh bodies without the play dropping off? There's a, there's a thing. You got depth and you got quality depth. I think as we get into the fourth quarter of this game, we're going to find out which team has quality depth. Guys that could come in who are not starters, but play like starters when they're on the field. And good to see Simeon Hines, a sophomore from Broward County, Florida, walking off under his own power. His backup is a freshman. Onazine, Rash what is that, Rashad Onazine. I think he's, he's going to be coming in for this, but again, we're going to find out this freshman is ready to roll. Well, again, only 15 total first downs in that first half. Eight for Army, seven for ULM. Total yards, 159 for Army, only 108 for ULM. On second down, Daly continues to get positive yardage thanks to the guys up front. Yeah, they get movement, and it's consistent. Again, you're not going to see anybody on the ground. These are big guys moving people. You see the frustration from the defense. Because Jalen, oh, excuse me, Jalen Ware, let me get that right. Sorry to the Ware family. Jalen Ware, Jalen Ware jumped around and couldn't make the play. If you're going to jump around to the backfield, you better make the play. If you don't, you're going to see the, the running back run through that hole, and that's what we saw right there. And another one of the Warhawks slow to get up, and the guess would be as they're working on that calf, and he is hydrating, that it is a cramping issue. And again, the uh, game time temperature was in the high 90s with the heat index in triple digits here in North Louisiana tonight. So you mentioned the hydration. Now the electrolytes is about to go in. Big indication that it is a cramping situation. They're working on the calf, as you said. Like this is what we're talking about. So now he has to come out of the game. And now another backup player will come in. And we see the depth of ULM getting tested early in this third quarter. That's Aiden Huntington. You see it's still 97 degrees. Wow. And it is soupy. Why are you to bring up food? 
You know I'm hungry. No, 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 no. I haven't eaten all day, bro. You gonna I bring food? I, no. You said soup. I heard you say soup. You heard what you wanted to hear. I didn't say anything about food. Soupy. That's soup to me. I, 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 soupy sales. I might have been talking about <laughs> the old comedian. Who knows? <laughs> Miles Stewart. And by and large, this ULM defense has been up to the task to stop the run. Yeah, and I like how there's more than one hat on the football. That's what you got to do against Army because they're going to find a way to spread you out and get in one-on-one -on -one situations, whether it's against a fullback, whether against a pitch man or the quarterback. But you got to get hats to the ball because these are very physical runners. And when you got three or four guys against one, it's good for the defense. In that first half, 25 carries for 75 yards. Obviously, only three yards per carry for Army. Again, that's a win as far as I'm concerned if you're ULM. That's it, no question because Army, again, is a 300 plus rushing team historically 300 yards a game Allen's punt comes down at the 34 yard line secured by Devon Bugs Mortimer defense I love defense opportunistic get your hands on the ball and catch the football stay up and make house calls scoring for your team. That's how you play complimentary football. Great job of catching the ball away from your body. Great job, Max. Get up field, get to the far sideline, put your hands up, have fun, and then you saw Army capitalize off of that with three points. So 10 points off turnovers, that's what you want to do defensively, especially when you're trying to get a road win. Jaya Wright, who in that first half was 8 of 17 throwing the football. Flag comes in at the tail end of the play, which picked up 8 yards. On the carry by Isaiah Woolard. We'll see if it stands. Holding. Offense number 55. 10-yard penalty. We play second down. That's the center, Zarian McGill. Down. He is the leader of the O-line, second-year starter at center who commits the penalty. And you may be wondering about those helmets and the uniform. We, we've got to tell the story. They are wearing their P-40 Warhawk Series uniforms tonight because the Curtis P-40 Warhawks were the Army Air Force's principal armament back in the early 1940s and inspired these special uniforms. So with the Service Academy coming here, they are showing their appreciation for the Army and these are their unis and the helmets are a late ad last couple of years because of the Curtis P40 that Warhawk helmet has been added and I think it brings it all together great tip of the hat to your opponent we know off the field army is super important to us right with the army helps keep us safe and our way of life intact so I love the nod mm. screen pass complete to Nana Davis couldn't go anywhere gain of two Jimmy Charlo, the outside linebacker, able to play that beautifully. So those little wide receiver screens, they're counting on the defense loafing. They're counting on inside-out pursuers running half speed to the ball. Well, you're not going to get a half speed effort from Jimmy Charlo. He's captain for a reason. He's going to give you all the guy, all he's got every single play. And basically, that's how all these cadets are. They play hard. Third down and nine. What does Jaya right half up his sleeve? Flush from the pocket. And he's able to get back to about the 37-yard line, a gain of two. But Trey Sophia making the stop to put an end to that drive. Well, a lot of times we saw Wright break the pocket and have room to run. And this time, Sophia said, uh-uh. I'm a free hitter. I'm going to come to balance. I'm going to make a tackle in the open field. That's not an easy tackle because Wright's a really good athlete. He's a dual-threat player. And he's not tiny. He's going to try to run on contact, but not that time. Trey Sophia, nice job of open field tackling, sir. Yeah, he's done a nice job transitioning this year from the D-line to a linebacker position. They want, to they want him to take that Andre Carter position, that really good football player they had right now who's playing for the Minnesota Vikings, made the team. Yeah, he did. Made the 53-man roster and could make his NFL debut next Sunday. He's going to be one of those guys that undrafted, but we're going to hear from him before his career is over. Hard to believe we made it all the way to the third quarter without mentioning Andre Carter. Right. He might be watching his alma mater up 10-3 here in the third quarter. The third quarter with Kyoka Jackson. I'm Doug Sherman. The NFL season starts next week, and NFL Network is ready. On Tuesday, Hall of Famer Kurt Warner sits down with the reigning Super Bowl champion Patrick Mahomes. 
It's the two-hour game day season preview show presented by Lowe's starting at 8 Eastern only on NFL Network. My, fam my former teammate. Kurt Warner. Yes. Yeah, you in St. Louis, the the, that, the the fastest show on turf. Greatest show on turf. Greatest yes. show on and, turf. And, and from 99 through 2001, I believe that was the greatest run by a quarterback in the history of football. If you look at the efficiency. Oh, you can make that case. Yeah, no question. Unbelievable. I mean, that guy, we would go practices with that ball, weeks of practice where that ball never hit the ground. You, of course, played on the defensive line with those terrific teams, as you did in Tampa Bay in more than a decade in the NFL. Coming out of Penn State is an undrafted free agent. So let's go back to Army's undrafted free agent, as we were talking about, who is now one of, I believe, five former Army football players on NFL rosters. Yeah, these guys are tough. They're disciplined. They're going to be great locker room guys, and they're effort guys. And, I'm just, and I know the, the size-speed combo of Andre, he's going to show up big time when his career is all said and done. We don't know who he is as an NFL player. Yeah, Andre Carter II was a third-team AP All-American linebacker at Army. Went undrafted, somewhat surprisingly. Yeah. But, of course, he got into camp with the Vikings and, and made that team. Well, he had a huge junior year. Put up big-time sack numbers. The second year or the senior year, the, the offense the offenses knew who he was and took him away. He showed his ability to drop as a bigger guy. But his side speed combination really, really translates to the NFL game. I expect him to be an edge rusher and be very effective just in that role. Cole Christensen among the other former Black Knights in the NFL. So right now what I'm starting to notice, Doug, is this Army team is starting to impose their will with their offensive line that we know is bigger, revamped, larger guys, and big backs. Watch the running on contact. It, these aren't backs that are looking to juke you. These aren't backs that are looking to get hit and go down. They're looking to deliver punishment, especially in the third and fourth quarter where you've been hit over and over and over. It's a game of attrition. Who's going to say ouch and start turning down contact first? Would you expect anything different from the guys from West Point? No, and they, he told us it's going to look different, guys, but we're the same team. And right now, the rushing yardage is starting to mount up. After the five-yard gain by Hayden Reed on third down, run it up the middle. First down and then some. Bryson Daly continues to get positive yardage out of the quarterback position. And another ULM player is slow to get up. The offensive line. There's not there's one penetrator, but he came through with an arm tackle and missed it. And when your free hitter missed it, you know positive yards is coming next. Nice job of tackling there to save the catastrophe by Max Harris, but I'm just loving the offensive line's work. That's another quarterback lead. He's getting behind his running back, Tyson Riley, and he's looking for daylight. I believe that's, I believe that's Dylan Howell jogging off the field. Well, that might have been, excuse me, that, that might have been Michael Batten, number 44. But uh, we see the injuries are starting to mount up for ULM, and that's not good news. Uh, we talked about testing the depth in backup. Well, Michael Batten's a backup, right? And so that's now your third guy playing the Mike linebacker, Travell Johnson. He now has to step up and get reps as you look at the freshman center, Brady Small. Yeah, from Mount Ephraim, New Jersey. Don't let the baby face fool you. He's a tough kid who has established himself very early on during training camp. And here to start the season as a foundational piece for the Army offense. Once again, the ULM defense has not been fooled. Max Harris again in on the stop for Hayden Reed. Let's take a look at young Brady Small. True freshman now. now he was in prep school last year, so that's sort of like a redshirt year. That's exactly right. It helps him get involved in the, the culture of the Army cadets. But he's still young. And... This is his first year on campus going through everything as a varsity football player for Army, and he's holding his own, and he's just going to get better and better as this season goes on. And again, for the first time in decades, Army doesn't have its quarterback under center. Off a of play action, the pass is complete across the 40-yard line. 
to Noah Short, the sophomore from San Jose. And Drew Thatcher is starting to get in his bag a little bit. I mean, I'm just so tickled to watch Army play football like this because you've just never seen it before. Watch him move the pocket after the play action. Set up and throw a rocket on a curl underneath. So they're playing with the eye discipline of the ULM defense. We're showing you run. We've been running it effectively. Now I'm going to pull a ball out and throw an accurate ball. He played defensive back short did last year. Special teams. He's moved to the offensive side. You need more wide receivers with this offense. But again, they are still the Army Black Knights. They're going to run the football. They only completed three passes in the first half. And I promise you, if you don't take care of the dive, you have no chance of stopping right. this offense. Right. Everything they do, whether it was under center or now in the gun, is predicated on the basic, most basic football play of all time. That's the fullback dive. And if you're going to allow a guy to get six and seven yards on a fullback dive, you got no shot. Jeff Munkin is a Paul Johnson protege. He was an assistant at Navy and Georgia Tech, learning the triple option, then employed it as the head coach for the first time at Georgia Southern for four years, then the last nine years at Army. But rules changes employed last year by the NCAA have prompted Army to change things this year, running out of the shotgun, but still a run first team by far Jacoby Buchanan on the run, only picking up a yard. So this rule is what forced the change. Once Coach Munkin said they'd taken away our advantage of having cut blocks and guys not understanding how to play it and not practicing against it, he realized he had to change. And so you got to give him credit, not being stubborn, understanding that the rules are forcing my hand, so it would be silly to fight the rules. You can't fight the rules. So you go ahead and evolve, change what you do, but guess what? They're still going to put you right in the mouth. Yeah, they are. Third down and two. And again, trying to punch him in the mouth for those two yards, but it was tough sledding. Maybe they picked up a yard. They're going to mark it at the 49-yard line of ULM, one yard short of the line to gain. That's fourth down. Nice job. But look what? Look what's happening right now. The guys in the white shirts are staying on the field. This is what they're used to doing. This is four down territory. Once you get to that 50 or near it on the minus or plus side, whoa, I stand corrected. I stand corrected. You run this, and I'm shocked that they're running on this punt team because, my goodness, Fourth and a yard? Army? Well, you take it as a win. You're only up seven. You've possessed the football for several minutes. You've flipped the field. Now get a good punt, good coverage. You might get the football back at midfield again. It sounds good, but I got Jacoby Buchanan, who, who they tell us has never lost a yard in his entire career. <laughs> and all I need is one yard? Uh-uh. I'm, I'm giving it to the big fella. But what do I know? I mean, I don't, uh, you know. Coach Munkin is the second winningest coach <laughs> in the history of Army football. We'll see how it plays out. 440 remaining in the third. All right, so let's continue what we were talking about going to break, Tioka. Army has possessed the football about seven minutes longer than ULM. They have more plays, and ULM has not shown the ability to move the football on offense against this Army defense, and yet still Army didn't go for it on fourth down and one. And you're averaging 3.1 a carry. All you needed was one, but this is where we are now. If you're ULM, you got to take advantage of this. you got to stop. I need first downs. Well, that's a good start. Gain of almost 10 yards on first down. They'll give nine where they mark it. Watch the vision. Okay, he's just not going to run like a blind dog in a meat house. He's going to look for cracks, and he's going to finish it going forward. I like this guy right with the ball in his hands. He's an excellent runner. I want him to be a little more efficient in the pass game to make this offense go. Hands it off. Big hole. Here's a big play for the Warhawks. Out to midfield on the run by Hunter Smith. He's one of their new players. He got down, down, around. Nice job of running power O. Power O Y with two pullers on the outside. Good vision there by the runner, Hunter. Yeah, they say he's got good pad level runs bigger than he is. That pass is incomplete in spite of the best efforts from the receiver trying to sell it still. But Darian Wiley is not going to win that argument. Giant Wright pulled the string on that one. They, we've seen them complete a lot of just real quick passes, pop passes for five or six yards. Missed it on that one. Wright keeps. And the young man from Fort Wayne, Indiana, is going to be gang tackled for a big loss. All the way back to the 45-yard line. It's a loss of five. So Nathaniel Smith made the play. He didn't finish it off. But watch Smith get the penetration right there. Now, you want to make that tackle, get the TFL for yourself, but you set it up for your teammates. Again, you can make the play without making the tackle by getting penetration and blowing up the run game. 
Well, this is such a big night for Jaya Wright, making his first start at the college level. He is a sixth-year senior. Should say first start at the Division I level. He had a stop at junior college, and so his parents, David, Jill, stepfather Scott, all made the trip here to Monroe, Louisiana to see their boy in this big spot. Well, they brought pressure on that play. Doug, they, they, heat, they heated up the pocket. He had man coverage on the outside. Tried to run the hook route, but the ball was inaccurately thrown. And I think he felt the pressure. Wright knew the pressure was coming, and he sort of rushed himself a little bit. You can feel the pressure, but don't let the pressure get you off schedule. Go through your progressions. You step and throw the football as if it's not there. That's the type of ice in your veins you need. And, and when we talk to head coach Tommy uh, Terry Bowden, he said, I knew this guy's a good quarterback, but will he have the poise under pressure in the game? That time, the pressure got to him a little bit. ULM seemed happy to take the penalty. They had their offense come off the field and didn't bring the punt team back on until they sprinted on with about four seconds mm. on the play clock. But because of that big run by Hunter Smith, it was not a drive for Terry Bowden's team that produced points, but they have flipped the field back in their favor. Well, one bad, two bad things happened to them to get off schedule. Remember, they missed a pop pass that would have gotten four or six yards and gave them an easy second down and short. They missed that pass, then they got the big TFL, and it just took them completely off schedule. Right now, they're still trying to forge their identity offensively. They can't afford negative plays because it gets them off schedule and makes them punt. Back to receive Cameron Jones out of Harvard Westlake High School in Southern California. He has to watch it fly out of bounds. He was at the 20-yard line. Let's see where they mark it out of bounds. Ooh. Up to the 31-yard line, which is where Army will take over. The Army defense has put points on the board. Can the offense do it? Here. and then some still on his feet inside the 40 yard line and how about the black knights of the hudson on the move ijon marshall 35 yards on first down jet sweep and look at the blocking at the point of attack and you get one defender out run it you bounce off another you can't bang them down you gotta wrap them down ijon marshall is not very big but just like everybody else in that white uniform, he is tough. Watch him bounce off. Boom. Breaks two tackles there. Cuts back. Another run, overrunning defender. Well, how, about, how about this? For Ijon last year, he caught only six passes for a total of 208 yards. Mm. He is a big playmaker. Yeah, and they, they would do that off the play action because they ran the ball for over 300 yards a game. And so when they did throw it, it was for chunk plays. They tried to gash you downfield with slants and posts. And he was the, on the receiving end of many of those, but he is not unfamiliar to running the ball because they would pitch it to him too. So this guy is a dual threat, versatile athlete in this offense. Well, to illustrate your point, he carried the football last year, did Ijon Marshall 24 times for 256 yards and a touchdown. That's yeah. better than 10 <laughs> yards a carry. A big play just waiting to happen. And we just saw one as Army in business. First down. Thanks to number three in white out of West York High School. He's a Baltimore native. Keep it on the ground, up the middle. Keep those feet churning. Miles Stewart. It's another big first down run, and you're starting to get the sense Army is trying to wear down ULM. Yeah, they again, just lead right in the A gap, right up the gut. There's the lead block. Boom, beautiful. Now here comes a tight tough runner looking for yards looking for work not going down easy this is just old school physical smash mouth football out of a different formation but it's more of the same and for miles stewart this game is somewhat of a homecoming he is from new orleans and has all sorts of folks who have made the drive 
It's about a five-hour drive to get here in Monroe, but his mom, his uncles, high school teammates, his sister. And actually, his sister was offered a full track scholarship to ULM, but she picked Tennessee instead. Maya is now a junior with the Volunteers and probably rooting on her brother Miles, who has a couple of big plays here in the third quarter. Look at the cadets bleed this clock. This is what we're used to seeing from Army. Again, different formation, sitting in the pistol now. They're bleeding the clock, and the rushing yards are starting to mount. Hayden Reed tries to bounce it outside. And again, positive yardage. Looked like he could have been stacked up for no gain, able to get inside the 20-yard line. So the Warhawk defense has to say to themselves, okay, no more. We have to create turnovers or scoring ourselves. We, we played good defense statistically, but we got to go win the game now. You got to take it upon yourself as a defender to do more because the team needs you. Our offense is struggling right now. What can I do? Don't get out of the character of the defense. Keep the continuity, but I got to go make a play. Our team needs me. On third down and three, Tyson Riley and Jacoby Buchanan, their two big backs are in there. Buchanan listed at 255, Riley also 255. He's a lead blocker. Both of them lead block. And does it net them a first down? Indeed it does. So this quarterback run game is so effective. Why? Because the quarterback runner now, you buy an extra blocker. If a quarterback just turns and hands that ball off to the running back, that's one less guy coming through. He keeps the ball. That running back now becomes a lead blocker when you already have two tight ends, three tight ends at the point of attack. So this extra guy added to the run game in terms of the quarterback is making this very effective, and ULM has to adjust on the fly. After a scoreless third quarter, Army is, the the is in the red zone again. The offense trying to take advantage of its defensive presence all night long. Up by a touchdown, the cadets on opening night lead the Warhawks. Stadium where the Army Black Knights just keep pounding that nail. Now they've rushed the football 40 times for 167 yards and trying to grind out some more points on offense. Well, what have they most relied on, especially with their quarterback, Bryson Daly, to kind of seize command on this drive? Well, the quarterback running the football is nothing new for Army, but how they're doing it with quarterback leads, that's the difference. We talked about buying the extra guy now. We're going to be one short at the point of attack defensively. And so that's how they're doing it. They're doing it with a fullback dive and the quarterback lead. That's been the bread and butter. So what do you do now if you ULM? I, you got to start stunting inside. You got to start getting guys... In, on movement because right now they're being engulfed by this bigger offensive line. I want to get this defensive line moving up inside, make that ball bounce. Stewart, push back. They will mark his forward progress. At the line of attack, Jalen Ware, though, got off the block to make the tackle. And that's an excellent job of getting penetration. When your nose can get penetration, there is no run game that's going to work. One of the few times we've seen this defensive line get into the backfield, but it blows it up, and they needed it. So right now, ULM, if you can get off this field on third down, no harm, no foul. Army only threw the football once in that third quarter. Let's see if they go to the air here on third down and long. Only four of eight passing, but they've been effective for 101 yards through the air. Daly pitches it. Going nowhere was Hayden Reed. Jatarius Evans coming up from his bandit position. And that will bring the field goal unit back out of the field. Option defense is assignment football. Who's got the court? Well, who's got the dive first? Who's got the quarterback and who's got the pitch? And right there, Jatarius Evans says, I got the pitch. I can make the play in the open field, but he had help. A 28-yard attempt. Upcoming for Quinn Moretzky. It is good. He is now two for three on field goals tonight. And he gives Army a 13-3 lead early in the fourth quarter on opening night here in North Louisiana. We see a quarterback change here early in the fourth quarter for ULM. The Warhawks down by 10. 
about to get the football back after allowing another field goal. Hunter Herring has been warming up throughout the third quarter and early in the fourth quarter as Jaya Wright and the offense has repeatedly struggled to move the football and put points on the board. We shall see as the kick comes. That lands beyond the end zone. And for ULM, there's still plenty of time on the clock, but Tioka, you've got to start making things happen. Yeah, I and mean, they got to change the scoreboard at this point. We talked about getting a long drive, getting first downs in the last possession. Well, now we're getting deep into, the, into this game. And now the game is starting to get away from you, so they're going to go and turn to Hunter Herring and see if he can be a spark plug because... Jaya Wright was playing well early, but I think he's lost some confidence, especially in the, in, the, in the throwing game. He's run well, but they need to get the ball downfield. They need to loosen this thing up a little bit and test Army's pass defense, which was porous last year. And he is a local. Hands it off on first down. Hunter Herring went to Wachita Christian. He's from West Monroe, Louisiana, just down the other side of Wachita, the uh, Wachita River. And he originally actually committed to ULM on a baseball scholarship before he changed his mind and became a raging Cajun football player. Didn't play in two years with ULL and then wound up transferring back to his hometown school to play football. What do you know? How about that. <laughs> found his way back. Well, now he's found his way out of the football field. First pass complete on the money. Although the receiver was about a yard shy of the line to gain, Nana Davis with the completion as he picks up four. Needed five, though, to move the chains. And so that brings up fourth down and one. The offense still on the field for ULM. Well, it's, to me, it's, it's, it's no time to punt the ball. You've opened this thing up a little bit. You've got a, a fourth and short. There are a lot of things you can run. Looks like quarterback sneaks can be one of them. They get the push and a first down. And I'd also like to see ULM change the tempo. I, I, I would like to see him go a little bit faster now. Let's, let's test this Army defense, give us some different formations. Let's move around, create some motions, but up the tempo and make them start having to play a faster team, or faster defense, excuse me. Herring hands it off. Spin move by Woolard. And he's able to pick up yardage out across the 40-yard line. I like the job of spinning off contact. And I also like this tempo change from ULM. Get up to the line of scrimmage and let's go. Former Ole Miss Rebel picked up six yards. Second down and four. Look at the off coverage on the slots. You got slants all day long, especially to the right side. Herring's pass a little bit out in front. And unable to haul it in was Darian Wiley. I think your slot receivers are so wide open with so much cushion. It's an easy four yards just throwing it out there. So remember earlier they were throwing these pop passes to the outside receivers. But if you could just look at the, the, the amount of cushion that these slots are getting. It's a lot of room there. Herring spun across the 45-yard line. It's another ULM first down. Oh, the decisive right there. He saw that they were going to play coverage. They dropped off all of their outside defenders to take away that slot throw like I was talking about. Now you only had three rushers. He took the ball, found a hole. Herring down the middle, throws a beautiful football, but Davis was defended extremely well. Cameron Jones able to break up that long pass. Well, I like how he played from the outside in. He's in a trail technique right here. That arm gets wrapped slightly early, but, but I, honestly, I'm okay with that call. I mean, he, he did not affect the receiver, in my opinion. The ball was certainly catchable, but he contested that catch with his play side arm. He's a bright young man. He majors in engineering psychology and minoring in geography. And again, I love this one-two combo of the senior cornerbacks for Army. Cameron Jones, Jabari Moore just getting it done again this year. Yeah, good football players. They lost a terrific football player last year. 
one of the better safeties in the country, but they're replacing him now. They're playing good down the field coverage, but Hunter Smith, that was a catchable ball. Yeah, we don't have time at this point. We get, it's getting late. We can't have these miscues if we're still trying to win the game. On third down, Heron to pass. Puts it up. Caught. And dropped at the 46-yard line. And the receiver frustrated that he wasn't able to get any yards after the catch. Casey Larkin defending very well to keep Bugs Mortimer from getting to the 44-yard line. Tough decision here. The clock is starting to become an enemy. Got fourth and ten. A lot different than fourth and one. Really obviously. Is. Really is. And so the punt team comes out. But again, that, that drop by the running back Hunter Smith, where he could have had positive yards, that floated this uh, that drive. Gilbo gets the punt away. Fair catch made at the 15-yard line. Army's defense able to stop ULM, but there is a flag down on that punt. Personal foul, roughing the kicker, defense, 15-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Well, there was heavy pressure on Braxton Gilbo, but that is where the flag comes. And that's a rare miscue by an outstanding special teams unit of Army. Every year, Army has one of the better special teams units. Let's see what happens. you got to pick a place three yards in front of the kicker and that's tough I mean you got a guy trying to make a play and accidentally falls into the, the leg of the kicker and you know you got to protect the kickers they're in a very vulnerable state when they're kicking that ball like that and that's not egregious not a whole lot you can do there you made an effort to try to block it falling down lose your balance it is what it is well that is their very promising freshman linebacker Elo Madozi. All-state triple jumper, long jump school record holder. But he makes a mistake there, and so ULM keeps the football. If I'm ULM offensive coordinator Matt Kubik, I'm taking a shot. you got, you got to capitalize on this field position right now. First and 10 from the 39 off the pump fake. Throws it down the sideline. Incomplete. Well, that's excellent defense, excellent coverage by Aaron Bibbins. He did not go for that pump fake. He played his responsibility, did not jump up, did not get flat-footed, stayed in his back pedal, turned and ran. Great job there. We talked a lot off the top about Tyrone Howell, who was the intended receiver there, the sixth-year senior from Idabel, Oklahoma. We have not called his name here in the second half. That's right. On second and ten. Mm. No room to run up front against Army's defense. Only two yards on the carry. So what do you dial up here if you're Kubik? you got to find a way to get your playmaker, one of the best football players on the field, if not the Tyrone Howell, the football. Right now they're making a concerted effort of taking him away. They're bracketing him with two guys. Chris so, Bray, Darius Richardson, yeah. Nathaniel Smith, all the big guys up front doing their thing. No question. Aaron going to have to scramble. Tucks it, lowers his shoulder, and gets out of bounds after the hit by Bo Nicholas Paul. Penalty marker sits. Offense number 72. Mm. At the 43, Talik Lockett, the right guard, called for the penalty. Yeah, that's a killer. That is a killer right there. Cues are starting to mount up. Let's see if we can see the hole. There it is. Yep. That's some Jersey pool, right? That's easy. You horse collar a defender like that, turn his body, the flag is going to come out. And I'm thinking right now, ULM, this is two down territory potentially, so you don't have to get it all. You, you got to be careful with this ball. Take what the defense gives you, Hunter Aaron. If that is a is that a scramble or is that an underneath throw? Either one. Did you see these DBs back way off? And yeah, that was Stacy Wilkins, the left tackle, who was called for that hold. Trying to get Tyrone Howell involved once again on the completion, the fourth completion for Hunter Herring, the backup quarterback who was in for this drive, but time continues to tick away for ULM. Under nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. 
And they once again have to bring the punt team out on fourth and long. Well, it's, it's about to be under eight minutes and 30 seconds. And this is a borderline decision. Now, it's also in the area of the field where a fake is certainly possible. Down two scores. Do they have anything up their sleeve? The punt is away. And does he pin him in the corner? No, it goes out of bounds. And indeed it is marked at about the two-yard line, so an excellent punt. Take a break with 8.19 remaining. Story from Monroe, Louisiana, Malone Stadium on opening night. Temperatures in the high 90s. Army gets the football back inside its own five-yard line. And if you're ULM, you force two turnovers tonight, an interception and a fumble recovery. They need something like that here, Tioka. No question about it. And that's a good start right there. But you, you it, defensively, you got to say to yourself, okay, it's, it's now another, guys. we got to stop this running game. Jacoby Buchanan chopped down after picking up two yards. And he's hearing it from the nose guard, Jalen Ware. A couple of big boys going at it. No scoreboard watching. Right now, this is about mano y mano. Does the guy in front of me win the next play? Every defender has to take it upon themselves to do more for their team in order to get this win. Brady Small, the freshman center, has to be secure on the snap. Safe call. Hayden Reed dropped inside the five-yard line. And once again, ULM up to the challenge. Trayvon Randall, the spur, a junior from Greenwood, Mississippi, with the tackle. And they brought the spur off the corner. He made the play. If you're going to be a free hitter coming hard off the corner, you have got to make the play from the backside. So right now, ULM has put themselves in position to get off this field and force a backed-up punt. That's exactly what you can ask for. Nothing else other than a turnover. Can you get the turnover here on third down? If not, force them to punt out of the end zone. Bryson Daly, the junior quarterback from Abernathy, Texas, came into camp pressing a little bit. First time as a starter. He has handled himself nicely here tonight. He's thinking just secure that football, even with his teammates pushing him out to about the 10-yard line. That'll bring up fourth down, but it gives him a little more room to work with if the punt team comes out. Yeah, and it's dramatic, but they're going to punt this ball. I mean, <laughs> that's a dramatic hold by Coach Munkin, but no, no. You're going to punt this ball. And so now your punt blockers, right? Your punt coverage team, they have to be blockers first. You have to do everything fundamentally correct, not to let any leaking defenders into that backfield and allow your punter to get off a clean punt. And if he does it right, it should be a fair catch. No return. Cooper Allen standing in the middle of the end zone. Jeff Munkin says, we have a unique culture around our special teams. They deliver here on the punt. And there will be no return. So very nicely done by the Black Knights special team. Uh, that's a mistake right there. You got to come up and field that punt. If you're Bugs Mortimer, you got to catch that punt. Save the yardage for your offense leads Virginia Union into an HBCU matchup against Morehouse College. It's the Black College Football Hall of Fame Classic tomorrow 4 Eastern live on NFL Network. With Tioka Jackson, I'm Doug Sherman. Folks who have made the trip here to Monroe, Louisiana, rooting on the Army Black Knights, hoping they can close out the final 5 minutes and 54 seconds as ULM has its backup quarterback, Hunter Herring, back out of the field with its offense. On first down, they run it with a huge hole up the middle. Gone. He is gone. Hunter Smith. Well, that's how you get yourself right back <laughs> in the football game. And I'm happy for that young man because he's made a couple mistakes tonight. And he owed his team one. And he paid him back big time. How about the call, though? When everybody in the stadium thought they were going to come out and throw the football, you just run a simple one-back dive, just like Army has done to you all night. Your offensive line opened up a big hole, and Hunter made him pay. A big PAT to draw it back to a three-point game. It is good, 13-10 to on the long touchdown run by Smith. When you execute the blocking up front that well, 
I promise you, I could have gotten yards here. Nice cutback, though. See, he took some vision. No, I could not have gotten that. That, that actually came back door. If you look at it again, there was front side pressure, and there was nowhere to go. Boom, right there, the two-foot jump cut, and there's nobody home. And I promise you, number 21 is a burner. Untouched for 62 yards. The first offense we have seen in a huge play for the Warhawks. <laughs> Look at that. Dude, Victor goes as well. Well, listen, you got more to play. Enjoy yourself, but get refocused. But that's exactly the medicine that the doctor ordered. You need a quick score, and now your defense has some confidence. How about this for a combination? The ULM special teams yeah. puts the punt out of bounds at the three-yard line. Then the defense gets the stop and forces the punt, and now the offense gets into the game. Beautiful. I, you're the analyst now. I mean, <laughs> that's a great job. That's complimentary football that you just saw. When your defense gives you a chance, you have got to make your opponent pay. And so now Army will get the football back with 543 remaining in the fourth quarter. And team on the field, they kick it deep, though. That's smart. There's no need to play around there with an onside kick. Kick it deep, and now ask your defense, who just got your three and out, to answer the bell again. What a run by Hunter Smith, the sophomore out of Joe T. Robinson in Little Rock, Arkansas. Coaches told us he's got a really good spring to him, and with that burst, he has the Warhawks right back in this football game. Now, what do you do if you're Army? Okay, you say, listen, we're fine. Let's just come back with this dive play and the quarterback leads. They have not stopped it for most of the game. Empty backfield for Bryson Daly. A design run, nowhere to go. Aiden Huntington was waiting for him at the line of scrimmage for no game. With friends, because ULM are deciding to bring people in the blitz game. As you see right now, coming downhill is Carl Glass. And if he doesn't make the play, what it does, though, is muddle things up for the running back, make him be indecisive, and then your pursuit finishes it all. That's the adjustment right now. ULM is starting to blitz to stop the run. Stewart and Reed, now the running backs, standing aside Bryson Daly. On second and 10, Daly looks to throw, has time, gets hit as he passes. In and out of the hands of Isaiah Alston. Clock stops at 4.58 on the incompletion. But that late pressure came through perfectly and forced the air and throw by Daly. He's got time here. Watch him read it out. Now here comes the late pressure getting in his face. That's Joseph Backhole. Great job of getting late pressure and forcing the air and throw. Now you got third and long. You got to go do it again. Thirty five is the line to gain for Army. This is going to tell me how much they trust Bryson Daly. Daly gets rid of it, has a man complete at the 40 yard line out to the 45 yard line, still on his feet. It's a first down and more. Balls out. But the ball came out as he was fighting for that yardage and ULM has recovered. <laughs> He had the first down, could have gone down and secured the football instead in his want to make a bigger play. Army gives it up. Well, listen, I love the fight for extra yards. I'm cool with that. But you got to understand when you have the ball in your hands, you have the hopes and dreams of the program in your hands. Tuck it tight and hold it. I'm cool with all of this. Great job of stripping that football, though. Look, the ball's not going to come out by itself. You've got to make a concerted effort to attack the football. Great route, great catch, and I love this effort. No, no need to go down. Fight for that. But first things first, control that football. Don't let it out. But Carlin Viggins shows up. Viggins is an NFL prospect. That's an NFL-type play. He's just not going to be happy with the tackle. Pull that ball out because my team needs me. Flag comes, no play. False start. The momentum is all ULM. Go, man. Say no. False start. Offense number eight. Five yard penalty. Still first down. False start. 
And so it'll move him back. So if you yell him, you got to keep your poise. Please reset the game clock to 447. 447 on the game clock, please. You've grabbed momentum, but you haven't grabbed the game. And, and this late into the ball game, being down at home, every mistake gets magnified. You have to keep your poise and execute for the rest of this game. First and 15 for Hunter Herring. Off the play action. Going to try to scramble now. Still on his feet. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Pick up five to bring up second down and ten. I like the poise there from Herring. Did not get happy feet. Did not look like a deer in the headlights. He looked, went through his progressions. Once he saw there was nothing there, found running room. Hands it off. Another big hole up oh. the middle and another big gainer. Woolard, the former Ole Miss Rebel, tackled inside the 15-yard line. Where has this running game come from? Out of nowhere. Oh, my goodness. Another huge hole opened up by the offensive line. Isaiah Woolard for better than 25 yards. Listen, I'm going to give a lot of credit to offensive coordinator Matt Hubick. He's running it when they think they're going to throw it. The box is light, and they're exploiting it. And now ULM is in control of this thing. Under four minutes to go. They're well within field goal range, and, of course, they want to punch it in and chew up as much clock as possible. Keep it on the ground. Clock continues to run inside the 10-yard line. Quindralen Hammonds makes the tackle after a three-yard pickup. Uh, the running back, Hunter Smith. Excuse me, Doug, but listen, let's, let's give some credit to the Warhawk offensive line. Now, these guys now have showed up to the party. They're a little late, but they finally showed up, <laughs> and they're dominating the line of scrimmage. The center is Zarian McGill, a junior from Taylorsville, Mississippi. Now look at the Warhawks smartly run clock. Run clock in this situation. Force the hand of Army's offense once they get the ball back. Second and seven to the end zone. A one-handed grab. Oh, my. Oh Touchdown! My. <laughs> Tyrone Howell gives ULM the lead. One word for this one. Elite. 50-50 ball, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm always going to put my number my money on number four the coverage is there he's holding the defensive all one hand is all I need when I'm elite really on the field is a touchdown the previous play is under video review now he had possession yeah before that left foot came down out of bounds that's right and and now it's going to really be on the right foot but the first thing is first the call on the field is a touchdown so it has to be unrefutable Visual evidence that the call in the field is wrong, and that to me is a toe tap. The question is, does he have complete control with the right hand? And almost, and not quite sure, or maybe isn't good enough to get a reversal. It has to be irrefutable evidence. Does this look like irrefutable evidence that the call in the field was wrong? Boy, that's close. But close counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, mm -hmm. not in replays. So what I'm saying is, very wordy, like I am, no. always, <laughs> I'm saying that's not enough evidence, in my opinion, to reverse the call. It's close. Maybe that foot wasn't down. I agree with you, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do reverse it. Because it's a judgment call. It is so close. Oh, Is that goodness. right? Foot still on the turf when he actually secures it. Not when it touches his fingertips, when he actually secures it. And it's a great job by the guys in the truck because you got to go frame by frame on this thing. There's a catch to me. There's a catch and control. And I still think the toes of that right foot yeah. was on the turf. That might be the angle that seals it. But again, here's my question. After the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. There you go. And the language he used was confirmed. Yes. He's saying... The replay official saying, I see a catch. So it is what it is. But again, it's the elite play of your big time wide receiver to hold off the defense with one hand, catch the ball with the other, 
doesn't get any better than that. And all the while having the presence of mind to get that one foot down. A young man who began his college career at Division II Central Oklahoma University, found his way to Manhattan, Kansas, played a year with the Wildcats, and now he's turned himself into an NFL prospect with the Warhawks, and more importantly for tonight, the one-handed touchdown grab for the lead. I've been waiting for you, Tyrone. Thanks for showing up, and that's your sports in a moment. Dun da dun, dun da dun. <laughs> Welcome back to Monroe, where ULM has turned this game completely around in the fourth quarter. But I want you to take a look at one of the fans in the stands getting his hand held out and getting, getting Liddy with it, too, frame by frame. But you know what? We had great, great camera work by Cam Holland, Grambling State University student. Cam, I'm riding with you, bro. He's coming for your job. He's coming for you, Cam. <laughs> He's coming. Look, this is good work now. That's great thumb work. But listen, let's be honest. He's not broadcasting that on NFL Network, so there's no, there's no pressure on him right now. Cam, you got the pressure on you, man. So we went frame by frame, and the, the officials used your work to call that a touchdown. So, Cam, great job, bro. And now does Army's offense, this new-look offense, have enough in it not just to get a field goal, but now down four with 2.48 to go. Can they put it in the end zone? Last year, no chance with that offense, that triple option. They had no chance. This offense, though, you got a chance, but I would stay balanced. Daly at quarterback. He goes down hard at the 25-yard line. No gain on the play. And see, that's what I'm saying. You're going to see coverage. They're going to see the defense is going to play coverage. It's not too late in the game to run the football. Three-man line. Second and 10, Daly fires, intercepted at the 30-yard line, and that could seal it. A.J. Watts, the free safety from Columbus, Georgia, with the takeaway. And that's what I was talking about. You got eight defenders dropping. Every throwing lane is taken. And obviously, you want your quarterback to read it out and see these underneath defenders. And I just think, Doug, I just don't think he ever saw him. Look at him read it out. Yeah, and then you got a buzz drop from your outside linebacker. That's basic football. He's going to get underneath the play. Now, give credit to the defender for not dropping it. We've seen a lot of guys on defense put their hands on the ball and not come away with it, but not that time. A.J. Watts makes the big play, play of the game right there for ULM. Yeah, the turnover belt for Anthony Jr. A.J. Watts, his mom Shakira, his dad Anthony Sr., the former Akron Zip, who spent three years playing in the MAC, makes a huge play with the interception, and now the Warhawks just have to take care of the football with 2.20 on the clock. And to further the point about the running game still being available, remember that the clock's going to stop on first downs, right? It's going to stop because it's under two minutes. Well, at least you're getting close to under two minutes. Time out. Army, they're first. It'll be 30 seconds. I think when Army goes back and looked at this game and looked at that film, I think they're going to realize they had an opportunity to run the football, especially with your quarterback because the box was light and you could have outnumbered them at the point of attack and got yourself some really good, easy yards and then come back and throw it. But, you know, Hans says 2020, right? I mean, that's, you know, looking in the rearview mirror. Well, you know when this game turned was when the ULM punter Braxton Gilbo punted the ball out of bounds inside the five-yard line and pinned Army's offense back. And that triggered a complete change in this football game. Yeah, that's a great point. And, and, you know, the only thing I hate worse than quarterbacks are kickers. <laughs> but we got to give them credit. I mean, they get complimentary football. This is the ultimate team game, and you need every piece, every phase working together, esprit de corps, in order to get a win, especially against a quality opponent like Army, who's not going to give you the game. But give them credit. ULM has put themselves in position to finish this thing off. ULM in no hurry. Now eight on the play clock. Nolan Quinlan, the tight end, comes back tight to the formation. And with two on the play clock, they snap it, run it up the middle. Another good hole to run through for Woolard. 
Your ball security is paramount right now for ULM. Whoever has the ball, it's all about the ball security. You're not playing to get yardage. You're playing against the clock. Let's see how he secures this ball. I need two hands on that thing earlier. And that's not bad running or whatever, but I need two hands. As soon as you get into the line of scrimmage, you're going through it, two hands on the ball. And you see Coach Bowden telling him that right now. This game is far from over. It ain't over yet. You got to finish. Ball security is paramount. First and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. Down to about the 8-yard line for Isaiah Woolard. This Warhawks team has started to run the football effectively. Their numbers have jumped up here in the fourth quarter. Hunter Smith with a huge 62-yard run. Woolard has been productive. It really is something how the whole thing turned. Yeah, big plays in that run game, but again, the defense, you got to give them a lot of credit because they kept hanging in there. They kept ULM in the ball game. And if you think about it, they've only given up six points to their offense. Remember, Army scored on defense. So when your defense comes out and gives up six points while they're on the field, you're going to have a chance. And they kept getting the turnovers. Remember last year, minus seven in the turnover differential. Turnovers, getting turnovers is a point of emphasis all offseason for ULM, and it showed up in game one. And again, Coach Bowden continuing to remind his team you got to take care of that football. He's seen it all, guys. He's seen teams. He's seen games like this. This is crazy to us. He's seen them. Hold he, it up high. That's right. High and tight, two arms. You'll be fine. Willard for a short game. Well, you talk about the defense, Tioka. Jalen Ware leads the way with eight tackles, five solos, one for loss. Jeterius Evans, seven tackles. Max Harris, Michael Batten, six apiece. Austin Goffney, Kennard Snyder, five apiece. There's not been one guy just dominating. It's been a team effort, especially here in the second half. There's no question. We were getting on, at least I was getting on the defensive line of ULM early. But that turnaround was led by that defense starting to get TFLs. If you remember, they started to get penetration from the defensive line. That began to shut the running game down. And then also, there was an adjustment by the entire defense. And when we saw them begin to, to, to blitz guys to stop the run. So you got to give credit to Vic Koenig and say, hey, we're not going to sit back anymore. We're going to bring linebackers to fill these gaps and play man coverage on the outside and take our chances. And don't forget, the 10 points Army scored in the first half were direct results off of the ULM offense turning it over, a pick six, and then another turnover led to a short field and a field goal. So this ULM defense has been really, really good throughout. Now can the offense punch it in to put the game away? Herring picks his way inside the 10-yard line before being wrapped up by Cameron Jones. If you're Army in that situation, you're going ball hunting. You're trying to pull and snatch, get that ball out. But with no timeouts remaining, the clock continues to run, winding down on a minute. Can you run tough when the entire Ooh. stadium knows? Isaiah Willard. <laughs> Boy, you want to play football? You want to play big-time college football, D1 football? You better be ready. That's the grandpa in the running back's room. Mm -hmm. You think that's going to show up uh, uh, in the absolutely. film room? That's leadership right there. The film room is going to go crazy mm. when the old man gets a decleater. That's a guy who ran for 8,200 yards as a high schooler at Presbyterian Christian, wow. the most in Mississippi high school history, saying, you know what? I'm a sixth-year senior. I'm going to do what it takes to win a football game. Love it. Love it. Watch the leverage. Low man's going to win. I don't have the ball, but I'm running hard. Boom! Mm. Yes, sir. Mm. Introducing himself to Jimmy Charlo. And when you put a guy like Charlo, who's a good football player, back on his shoulder blades, you know you've done something. He rolled the most, partner. Boy, that's, that's big time. All right, so is the hairline getting a little iffy there? We heard from the coaching staff that he hears some grief about that hairline. Grandpa there. Now, if you think I'm going to co-sign that with my bald head, you're <laughs> tripping. I, listen, he, he's got hair. That's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt Kubik, who is like you, follically challenged, was kind of feeling his way through that conversation, yes, too. exactly. How but you he going? introduced it into the conversation. <laughs> that's true. That's a made a fair game, right? 
<laughs> Isaiah Woolard, my goodness. What a shot. There it is. I see you, Coach. You and I together, bro, me and you. But he talked about how big of an impact that Coach has had on this offense, on that, on that, uh, that running back room. He's a former head coach, Coach Fobbs. He brought all that experience with him. Blocked. Special teams once again making plays for Army with 30 seconds. They stop the clock at 29. That keeps the door ajar for the Black Knights. Was that Cameron Jones? I think that might have been Cameron Jones that got the block. Let's watch. Coming around the outside. Lay out. Beautiful. My goodness, he was all over that. Got a tremendous jump. You can't get a block from the outside like that unless you got a tremendous block uh, jump off the ball. Look at him turn that corner, make a hard right turn. Beautiful. Now, man, that ball went dead. How often have we seen block kicks start rolling so that a defender can pick it up and run with it? That wow. was amazing. How It's like he got shot. That ball laid right there on the turf. And that's a fortuitous non-bounce for ULM. Army has life. But they've got to go 80 yards in 29 seconds. So how big was that block? If they get the field goal, a touchdown would only tie it if you got the extra point. You have to go for two to get the win. Here now, touchdown game over. Time called by the officials. So Dwayne Coleman will come in at quarterback. Interesting. Sophomore from Selma, Texas. We presume he throws a better deep ball than Bryson Daly. Well, and he's been sitting watching. So you talk about a tough situation for the sophomore to come in. This is it. But I would caution Dwayne. You don't have to get it all in one play. Hit your check downs and your underneath guys and march down the field. Well, he was thinking about running the football, and ULM was ready. Dropped at the 14-yard line. Army's out of timeouts as the clock runs. Well, that's a big-time rush, and you see them slowly getting off the quarterback to let the clock continue to run. That's smart defensive football. And if you're Josh Lingenfelter, you got to get back to the line of scrimmage. Can't Under 10 that. seconds to go. Flag comes down. Running for his life is Coleman. Two seconds. One second as he's flung out of bounds. Let's see what the flag is. I'm telling you right now, Terry Bowden's trying to figure out why is it one second on the clock. <laughs> He's like, we're at home. It should be zeros. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what are you implying? Well, I know. Nothing. I'm just thinking, you know, inside he's thinking that. <laughs> he won't say it. <laughs> I'm here to say what you want, Coach. Hey. Offense, number 68. That penalty is declined. Third down. Should be a 10-second runoff, am I wrong? With no timeouts. No, are, does Army have a timeout? Because I, unless I got the rule, maybe I don't know the rule. But I thought it was when you have no timeouts, the offensive penalties in this situation, and maybe that's the NFL rule, because they're lining up. So clearly I, I must be wrong there, but I... I'm thinking that should be a 10-second runoff, but again, I guess I'm incorrect here. Well, this will be the final play, unless there's another penalty. Over the middle, caught by Alston. Here comes Marshall, got to stay in bounds. Back inside the five-yard line, and that will do it. The football is secured by Lou Tillery, and improbably, ULM comes from behind to beat Army 17-13. College football. Man, unbelievable. If that doesn't tell you, no matter what you're going through, not to ever give up, to keep your poise and keep fighting to the very end, this is the very definition of that. And so if you're Terry Bowden, you have got to be proud of how your team continued to fight, play team ball, and fight and fight and fight and make big plays and come away with an improbable first game win at home. Down 10-3 at halftime, down 10-3 in the fourth quarter, seemingly stuck in the mud. 
They come back to win it on opening night 17-13. Unbelievable. Army, man, you're going to watch this one and say, we didn't finish. We controlled the game for the majority of it, but if you don't finish against a quality opponent, you're going to leave licking your wounds. On a steamy 97-degree night in Monroe, Louisiana, ULM comes from behind to beat Army 17-13. For Tioka Jackson and our entire crew, I'm Doug Sherman. Thanks for watching, and so long from Monroe, Louisiana. USAA.